you're ready to take your relationship to the altar, then here are five tips to add to the initial five tips I shared earlier with you. First, you must focus on yourself. This is where I contradict a lot of my colleagues who preach that once you commit to a person, you must give all of your life to them. That is not what I recommend. I recommend that you focus on you. Most lovers are fixated on their partners. They are constantly calling and visiting. They are regularly asking, how are you? Where are you? Have you slept? Unknowingly, they are choking their partners. Come on, can you please focus on your dreams, goals, aspirations, purpose, assignment, and your personal development such that your partner begins to see you as an asset and say to himself, if I lose this one, I have lost a big bit now. This is not to say you don't care for your partner, you should. As a matter of fact, you must. But every day, let your gaze be more on your journey to awesomeness than on your monitoring of your partner. Get secured. This is also about seeing if this relationship will end on the altar. It is up to me and no one else. Saying this puts you in the driver's position, the place where you do the things you need to do instead of waiting for faith to make it happen. Another tip I will be giving out is gain communication mastery. Starting a relationship is easy, but staying in it is the big deal. As important as blood is to a woman, so is communication mastery to a relationship. Talking is not communication. This is the mistake many people make before getting their fingers burnt in relationships. Unfortunately, most people fail to learn. They repeat the same mistakes in multiple relationships and they continue to get heartbroken multiple times. A man and a woman are different in their communication. Each man is even different from the other. When you get to this process, you need to carefully study your partner as though you're studying for Cambridge exams. Note down every possible time your communication has been superb. Own it and duplicate it throughout your relationship. You will be shocked at the magic. Gaining communication mastery is also building true friendship. Until this is done, the altar may be elusive. Now another thing you must learn to do is serve. The moment you get to this level, you're making a commitment to give your all to ensure the success and greatness of another. Self-centeredness is not allowed if you intend for your relationship to get to the altar. Whether you're a man or a woman, if you're not ready to become a servant and treat the person as a master, you're not ready for the altar. To serve is to be there for a person like no one else in the world. You will also need a love goal. Have you ever heard someone say, I don't even know why, I just keep loving her by the day. What happened is simple. The person is speaking their love language consciously or unconsciously. If you love salad, each time salad is presented to you, you will like the person that offers it to you. That's how love language is. Everyone has some set of things that makes them feel loved extremely. For some people, it can be easily noted, but for some, you need to dig deep to find it. Love goal is that thing, after carefully observing your partner, that you have decided to do daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly to keep your partner consistently in love with you. When you are able to do this, then the altar is sure. Finally, get coaching or counseling. Most people take this part for granted. It is no wonder their relationship never makes it to the altar. I've been there. I was having trouble in my relationship and was contemplating a breakup. It took just one meeting with my counselor to realize that I was experiencing what was called a normalcy syndrome. You will have moments of tiredness and fatigue in your relationship. There will be a time you'll be so fascinated by another man or woman and you will contemplate breakup. Sometimes, the other person wouldn't even excite you as much. These are the moments where you need a dose of coaching and counseling. I usually advise that you start with a coach or counselor and you continue with one. That way, you can enter wisely and continue wisely.